So what is overlap? Well, when we take some time data and bring it into the frequency domain using the Fourier transform, we're always using some observation time or chunk of time data uh, that we denote with this capital T. So I need T seconds worth of time data to get one frequency spectrum. When I'm taking multiple averages or multiple uh, FFT calculations in a tracked processing scenario, then we have something else to consider and that's overlap. Now here I show two averages and average one obviously takes T seconds, average two gets me out from T to two T. So if I start average two, the moment average one ends, we would call this 0% overlap. But I could also start average two before average one has finished. In this case, I slide it back to 0.9 T and we would call this 10% overlap because there is 0.1 T worth of time data that's part of average one and average two. This could also increase to 25% and 50%, etc. Now it's important to notice that this data in this orange section here actually gets processed twice. It belongs to average one as well as average two. Also noteworthy is that I get two averages and I only need 1.5 T worth of time data. By overlapping, I use less time data to get the same number of averages, okay? So how does this affect my data? Well, the other thing that's going on is every time we have an observation time, uh, a measurement in the time domain, we should also be applying a window, and we do this to reduce spectral leakage. In this case, I'm showing a Hanning window, but the principle is the same for almost all windows. And we do this so that uh, our signal is periodic within our observation time t. So we have our original signal, we multiply it by a Hanning window, and we end up with this windowed signal. And this is the actual signal that the FFT is performed on, okay? And you see there are portions of the signal that are not present in what we actually perform the FFT on. We need to keep that in mind. Particularly if we're gonna take multiple averages um, and we don't overlap. So here I have four averages. I've chosen a one second capital T or a one Hertz Delta F, and I've got 0% overlap. And so my original signals here, my four handing windows butted right up against each other are here. And then I end up with this final uh, signal down here with my four FFTs shown. And you see there are portions of the original signal that do not, um, are not contained in this signal that we're actually using to average or uh, calculate multiple FFTs. So what does this do to my data? Well, you could end up with something like this. This is an engine run up or a color map where I'm changing speeds uh, versus time. And so I get these uh, orders out here and you see these dots. And these dots are a function of me having a one Hertz Delta F and no overlap in my handing window. So every one second, so you see nine seconds to 10 seconds here, every one second you get a dot. And that's because the handing window is drastically reducing the amplitude of my time data in between those windows. So I end up with these dots as a function of my windowing. So how do I overcome that? Well, I can overlap those windows um, by overlapping my capital T observation times, okay? And so if I overlap 50%, let's say, the peak of my second window is right here at the minimum of my first window. And so I'll offset that zeroing out uh, function of the window. What that allows me to do is never go to zero amplitude in my final windowed signal. So you see I've got some amplitudes up and down here, but it never goes down to zero like it did in this 0% uh, overlap case. Okay, so this is that same color map. This is 50% overlap and you see uh, the, dr the amount of dots has uh, increased here because I've got twice as many peaks in my um, windows here. And so it's gotten much better. I, if I wanted to further improve this, I could increase that overlap and it would even further reduce the, the dot phenomenon. Well, in test lab, I'm going to show you a different scenario. Here I've got a sweeping sine tone. I'm going to sweep it from 100 hertz 
up to 1,000 hertz over 10 seconds, okay? And I'm gonna calculate an average peak hold frequency spectrum. Ideally, I would see the amplitude jump up at 100 hertz, go over to 1,000, and drop down if I'm doing a peak hold average frequency spectrum. So let me show you, I've got a peak hold 0% overlap here. I drop that in, and what do we notice? We notice this handing window shape, uh, and I've got 10 of them. I've got 10 one second observation times, no overlap, and I'm applying that handing window, and so I see these big uh, swings in my amplitude. Okay, well, you know, well, we can overlap. Here's 50% overlap. And I dramatically improve my scenario because now I'm getting the correct answer maybe twice as many times, but I still have this dip in my amplitude, and those are that sort of that reduced dottiness of that second color map I showed you. Here's 90% overlap, and we can see it's getting closer to sort of my correct amplitude across the entire average. And it's not until I get up to 99 that I really get the consistently correct amplitude. So if you have changing frequencies in your data, you might consider a higher amount of overlap. If you're doing a stationary condition where you don't expect the frequency content to be moving around too much, 50% is probably adequate, and that will ensure that at least all of the instances in your time data will participate in your average. So in test lab, we have a couple different uh, places that we specify overlap, and it really comes down to whether we're doing that stationary averaging or we're doing tracked processing, and the settings are essentially the same. There's just some small differences here. So under stationary averaging, we have two main choices, free run and time. And under tracked processing, we have free run and then taco and time. And taco and time, the choices you make are sort of similar. And so I'm just going to cover the time example here. Free run in both scenarios is almost identical. And then the time method in both scenarios, tracked and stationary, are essentially identical. So I'm going to concentrate on free run versus time. So the thing to keep in mind in free run is that test lab is going to do the majority of the thinking for you, which is really nice. So I've got some time data here and I've got T seconds, small T uh, worth of time data. And uh, I specify my frequency resolution under the fixed sampling parameters, and that's going to set my T window, right? So regardless of what I set my frequency resolution to, I'm going to have some size window T of observation time to calculate each FFT. Now I have to keep in mind that if I choose a coarse delta F, like 100 hertz, I'll have a short T window. And as I make that frequency resolution finer, say 1 hertz, that T observation window is going to get longer. The nice thing about free run method is that test lab takes that into consideration and all I have to do is specify the overlap I want directly. I say free run, I say 0% overlap, and test lab's going to say, okay, for each one of those T's, I need this much time data. I'm going to 0% overlap them, and it's going to go ahead and fit as many full size of these averages as possible before it runs out of time data. I go to 25%. It will again handle that and it will start T2 so that they overlap exactly 25% regardless of how big this T window is. It will uh, only fit full observation windows in there. And so you see in this case where I'm overlapping 25%, this time data will go unused or unprocessed because it can't fit a T4 in here. If I overlap at 50%, test lab will say, oh, now I can fit a T4 and a T5 in here, and I'll have more calculations using 50% overlap than I did at 0 or 25% overlap. I increase this to 75%, and I get even more averages. I can fit nine averages in here before I run out of time data. Okay, So that's free run. You specify overlap directly, nice and easy. With the time method, it's a little bit different in that I choose time, and here I specify an increment, or if I'm doing stationary averaging, they'll call it averages per second, but the concept is exactly the same. I specify how much time I want to elapse between calculations. So here I'm telling test lab, start a calculation at each one of these hash marks, regardless of what my frequency resolution is, and regardless of what my T observation time is. So here, my overlap is going to become a function of this increment I just set, 
and however big that T window is, right? Let's say my T is equal to my increment. I choose an increment of one second. I select a one Hertz Delta F. That means I have a one second capital T or observation window. And I'll end up with this scenario, which is equivalent to 0% overlap. Let's say I set my observation time as being smaller than my increment. Now I have this scenario where I have gaps in my processing and this data in between my averages will not participate in my average or my tracked processing. Okay. And if I select a T that becomes larger than my increment, now I'll have some overlap. How much overlap? Well, I have to do a little bit more math to figure that out because it's not something I explicitly tell test lab to do. Here we need to do this additional calculation. So meaning you, when I'm using the time method, I have to keep in mind my increment and my frame size. And let's look at the three scenarios here. Here my increment is 0.5 seconds. My capital T is 0.25 seconds because I've set a delta F of four hertz. I put that those values into my equation and I end up with a one minus two times a hundred. So I'll have a negative percentage and that is going to indicate to me that I have a gap in my processing. If I set my increment equal to that uh, capital T, both are a half a second. I'll calculate 0% overlap here. In the instance where my increment is smaller than my capital T or my observation time, half a second for my increment, one full second for my observation time, I'll have some overlap. How much? Well, we do the calculation and we calculate 50% overlap. So to sum up, we use overlap to minimize the effect of windows. If I'm doing a stationary averaging, I want to have a 50% overlap at a minimum. If I'm doing some tracked processing or some moving frequency content, I might want to consider boosting that up to 75, 90, 99% to make sure I'm capturing that amplitude consistently throughout my sweep. Overlap also helps me increase the number of averages for a limited number of uh, seconds in my time recording. And in test lab, free run allows me to specify that overlap percentage directly. If I select time or taco, my overlap is going to be a function of that increment and then the frame size or the observation window that I select based on my frequency resolution. Hope that helps.